tidal theory here we go now this is a complex subject and by the end of it you'll probably be wishing you had gone off and got a degree in mathematics or fluid dynamics or some other subject I don't know first but don't worry I'm gonna start by breaking it down as simply as possible massively oversimplifying I'm gonna gradually add levels of complexity um, let's go start with what I'm gonna call complexity level one uh, but we're it's gonna be really hard to explain that out here I'm gonna need a whiteboard seems criminal to go indoors on a day like today but that's what we've got to do so I'm going to see you back in the saloon for a bit of a whiteboard lesson here we go complexity level one so what we've got here is this is the earth except in complexity level one the earth has no land this is all ocean it's an ocean world okay I told you we were gonna oversimplify things and over here we have the moon a bit of a cheesy orange color so the moon is our primary cause of tides and the reason for this is the moon's gravity has an effect on the earth now it's not a great enough effect to move the rock that forms you know the core of the earth or the land but water is is much easier to move and so the moon's gravity actually has an effect on the water and what we get is this bulge of ocean being pulled towards the moon and so here it is high tide now add on to this the fact that the earth is spinning the earth is rotating around its axis so whilst it's high tide here now as the earth spins it's low tide here as the earth spins this will move underneath the bulge it will go underneath the moon and and it will become high tide at this position and once it passes this position it's going to go around the back of the earth and it'll be back to low tide again so complexity level one the moon's gravity pulling the ocean towards itself creating a bulge which is high tide now complexity level two uh, we're going to start thinking about the moon's real position. In the last diagram, it was just off the equator. But in reality, uh, the moon's declination, the moon's position, varies between 28 degrees north of the equator and 28 degrees south of the equator. So as this moon circles orbits around the earth so here it is down here now it is now twenty eight degrees south of the equator on the other side of the world and what's happened is this tidal bulge this high tide has of course followed it so you can see the high tide bulge doesn't simply stay in one place with the earth rotating the tidal bulge as the earth spins and the moon orbits around the earth this this high tide is is following a complex path around the earth's surface starting to get a little bit complicated already eh? certainly looks over this messy diagram anyway moving on complexity level three now we're going to introduce the sun now of course the sun is an enormous celestial body which also has a massive gravitational effect on the earth 
Um, however, despite it being so big and the moon so relatively small, this is the moon, this is the sun, it's actually got a much less effect because it is so far away. So I think its effect is roughly 45% um, of, of the moon's gravitational pull, so much less. But what is important, the, the big effect it does have is if the sun and the moon are pulling in conjunction like they have here, in which case we might get a, this is our moon tidal bulge plus a little bit of sun tidal bulge on top. So a big tide there. Well, if the moon and the sun were pulling against each other, so that's <laughs> made a bit of a mess. Let's put our moon over here at right angles to the sun. Well, now we've got a, a moon bulge here and a lesser sun bulge here. And they're kind of fighting against each other. They're fighting for the same bit of ocean. And what we actually get is, is a much lower high tide. So when they're pulling together, we get a big high tide. When, when they're pulling apart uh, in, in opposite directions, 90 degrees, we get a much lower high tide. Before I add another layer of complexity here, we're just going to focus on this point, the interaction between the sun and the moon, uh, a little bit more. Uh, and the reason is of all the tidal theory we learn, this is the one with the most sort of practical application, the one that's going to make the biggest difference to us. So as we discussed, if the sun and the moon are pulling, <laughs> it's a rubbish circle, uh, are pulling together the gravity, we're going to get big high tides. And actually, the same happens if the moon is on the opposite side here. So, so long as they are in line, then we are going to get much higher high tides up here, big high tides and very low, low tides. So huge high tides here, very low tides there. And when this happens, uh, we call it a spring tide. So spring tides. And actually, we can see when this is happening because the uh, because of the way the sun is shining and being reflected, light has been reflected off the moon, we will either have a new moon, uh, a new moon here, so no moon, or a full moon. And we can all look up in the night sky and see the new moon or the full moon. And those coincide with spring tides, high highs, low lows. Now, conversely, if the moon is at 90 degrees to the sun, and they're fighting against each other, so either here or here. Then our low tides will be much higher, and our high tides will be much lower, and these are neap tides. So springs, full moon, new moon, high highs, low lows, neaps, 90 degrees off, so we're getting a half moon and we have high low tides and low high tides. So hopefully you can see why this will become quite significant to us, is the, how much the sea level is rising and falling. Okay, complexity level four. Uh, if you're still with me, fantastic. If you've made it this far, you've already got a little bit further than uh, then is covered in a standard day skipper course, so already pushing the boundaries of what you um, should really know. Uh, so if you stick with me any further, oh, pat on the back to you. Um, right, so complexity level four 
We're going to go back to when I talked about the moon's orbit around the Earth. I implied that it's just a circular orbit around the Earth. Well, this is not true. And because what actually happens is as well as the moon orbiting the Earth, coming around the Earth, the Earth also to some extent orbits the moon. The moon has a bit of a tug on the Earth, like we say, and causes it to wobble a bit. Uh, and I sort of I like to think about this as in Scotland we go to a lot of Kayleys, we do a bit of dancing and you grab your partner in some of the dances, you grab them by the hands and you both lean back and you spin around each other and you have a great time and you get your stability by leaning back against each other. Uh, now imagine if we have a, uh, a, an adult and a child doing this dance, this is kind of what's happening. These two, they've got their arms out, their, their gravity's holding on to each other and they're spinning around. But because the Earth is so much bigger, uh, it's, it's kind of the moon spinning around the Earth and the Earth's not moving too much. So, so we kind of have this centre of orbit actually cuts through the moon, oh, through the Earth, sorry, through the Earth, the edge of the Earth. And the Earth sort of wobbles around that as the moon orbits. And this, this line is actually called the, the Barry Centre, as the centre of a sort of dual orbit or, or of an orbit. Uh, so what effect does this have? Well, like anything swinging around, we've got this centrifugal force. I'm sure you've heard of centrifugal force before. Think about when you swing a bucket of water over your head and the water stays in the bucket. That's a centrifugal force pushing that water out, pushing it against the bottom of the bucket. Uh, or when you're dancing, like I said, we're getting our stability from spinning around each other from our centrifugal force. And so whilst the gravity of the moon is making a, a, a tidal bulge here, the centrifugal force is also causing a tidal bulge on the other side of the planet from the moon. So at any one time, we've actually got two high tide bulges circling around the Earth. Um, so hopefully you can see why that's important. We've gone from one high tide a day to two. So uh, yeah, pretty significant. Okay, that should get us started. So complexity level five. Uh, yeah, again, pat on the back if you're still with us. So again, back to orbits again, we've got sort of one more celestial influence we're going to cover. And that is, um, we've already talked about the moon and Earth's sort of weird combined orbit, but also as the Earth orbits the sun and the moon orbits the Earth. Uh, let's put that in there. Now, this isn't just my bad drawing. These actually aren't supposed to be circles. They are supposed to be slightly elliptical. And that's because none of the celestial bodies have a perfectly uh, circular orbit. They're all slightly elliptical. So what this means is as the, as the Earth is going around the sun, there are times when it's much closer to the sun and times when it is much further away. And when it is closer, the gravitational pull from the sun is much greater. And when it is further away, it is much less. And likewise with the moon, it has a slightly elliptical orbit. Sometimes it is closer to the Earth, sometimes it is further away. So the amount of pull it has, the amount of gravitational force on our oceans is changing. And this accounts for variations like we orbit the sun once a year. And so this accounts for variations on an annual scale. You'll notice at certain times of year, we get much higher tides or much bigger tides than at other times of year. Uh, and that's, that's what this is about.
Okay, complexity level six. Uh, right, well, you'll notice this is my earth again, but for the first time, I've not already filled it in by coloring it in with Aishan. And that is because we are finally gonna add in the also important to us land masses. Uh, I'm not gonna pretend I can at all accurately draw the actual land masses on earth for this is you know this will do um it's just there are great barriers of land is the important thing now just fill in the ocean there as well hopefully you can instantly see what a great effect this is going to have as our tidal bulge our great tidal bulge caused by a gravitational pull of celestial bodies is moving around the ocean suddenly it's going to hit land it can't just carry on through that land so we've got a big height here big wave which has suddenly lost the pull of the moon and it's going to start bouncing back the way let's say there's a little gap here um, and now all this ocean that's coming across, the only way through this gap is going to be if it all funnels through, it's going to get super strong as it goes through here. There's going to be deep areas, there's going to be shallow areas, and the water is going to react differently to all this. It gets way too complicated. Like we cannot predict uh, the tides around the world based on theory alone. It would take uh, a, a supercomputer uh, that we don't quite have yet um, however that's fine um, so long as we understand it's just a very complex subject and we still have accurate tidal predictions and we'll, we'll cover how we get those later but well done for sticking all the way out to uh, complexity level six that is far more than you need to know for your yacht master and far more then you'll probably get on any other day skipper or your master course. So ah, you're one up on everyone else. <laughs> the risks and the if we were travelling in a east direction, I come to the needle. But uh, navigation instruments is your next module. Navigation instruments. Favour to meet the diagonal line. models such as this one, this will have an antenna as well. Of life raft equipment and it must be streamed as soon as possible.